So tonight's meeting, make sure we have a quorum present. Um, yeah. Six. Six, six. Yeah. Okay. We just got a Larry Bird in there. Oh, great. Congratulations. That's good. Cool. Maybe you'll give us a zygograph. Um, Bill, where are you getting six? Uh, Tar, Reed, Hertz, Mullen, Aaron is, and oh, so. sorry, Reed is not on. Right, it was on. Yeah, she, her her camera is not working. on camera. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Again, as people sign in, we would request that you uh, identify yourself with your name, as this is an open meeting, and we're required to use that as part of our minutes as to who the guests were. So the plan for tonight's meeting is that we will get a uh, presentation, the most recent uh, plan for the proposed rail trail. Um, the land utilization committee is um, using this as a chance for them to catch up so we can make our decisions moving forward um, as to what actions to take. Um, they're depending on time and depending on how things go, there may be time for some comments or questions, uh, but for the most part, the other thing that we're going to be doing is we are trying to secure within the next two weeks the time and learning room at the high school so that we can in person have you all join us and uh, at that time uh, share your concerns and questions. Uh, I will say that at, at this time uh, the two people who schedule that room are both out this week and vacations next week. So I'm trying to find out who the third person is involved in that. If you choose to leave us any of your contact information, the meeting will be posted. We should have time to get it in the transcript. But any of you that give us your um, contact information, we would be happy to personally notify you uh, when that meeting is so you don't miss it. So uh, again, we'd ask that uh, you would take and uh, uh, follow up on that. So uh, Phil, if you're ready with your presentation, I'm gonna let you take it over and uh, just ask that everyone uh sit tight and follow this through and uh to the end you need you need to enable my sharing okay let's see well i can make you the host is what i can do well i can i can take i can take it back yeah Okay, can can people see the screen? Sure. All right, at least from the LUC members. All right, this is largely a rehash of what I presented um, at the select board meeting several weeks ago with updates on, on the route um, that we've made based upon, largely based upon public comment. So um, th th this, first two, this first two slides, show uh, pictures of what uh, the area looks like today. The, in the upper left um, is a picture of the Independence Greenway, um, which, is in, which is, runs from Peabody, almost from the North Reading line, um, all the way to Salem. 
um, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting view because that's, that is what we would expect the North Reading Trail to look like. It would be paved, um, it would be about that wide, um, um, it would, uh, it, and, and um, in the long term, the idea would be to connect um, North Reading to this trail, uh, which is um, at the Middleton, Peabody, Linfield, North Reading line. The, the other pictures show um, on this page, uh, mostly show what, what the former Smith property looks like. Um, we're calling that Riverwoods, and I will refer to that, that property as Riverwoods for the rest of this presentation. Um, there are existing trails in Riverwoods. There's um, easy access to the Ipswich River. Um, there's also access to, uh, to the existing trail network that resides in, in uh, Linfield. Um, Linfield has named that area of the town, which is some 650 uh, wilderness woods acres, Willis Woods. Um, and uh, they're looking to uh, expand that trail network and increase accessibility into that network. So having, having our network next to theirs um, sort of works for both towns. Um, the, the next page um, shows uh, what the, um, down the, the, the two pictures down in the lower left are pictures of the rail bed um, as it exists uh, in North Reading. Um, that is the rail bed itself is not in um, the former Smith property Riverwoods. It's, it's just south of it, it's, it's contiguous to it. The picture in the upper left is on Elm Street. Um, it's where uh, we would propose putting parking um, and a bridge into, uh, into Riverwoods over the marsh and over, over, the, uh, over the river. Um, and uh, the, um, the two pictures below of, 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 the, of the rail bed near Railroad Avenue, um, the, the, we're, we're actually at this point, point not thinking we're gonna go to Railroad Avenue. So um, that'll probably just stay the way it is. The picture um, of the rail bridge um, that, that where you see the pilings, um, that's, a, that's a bridge over the Ipswich that's just um, west of Ipswich River Park uh, on, on the rail bed. And the picture at the bottom right is uh, what the rail bed looks like within Ipswich River Park. The, the train line uh, ran right through what is now Ipswich River Park. So that just sort of gives you a, a feeling of, 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 of what, what's, what, what things look like today. So where, where do we stand right now on the North Reading Recreational Trail, also known as the, the Rail Trail? There was a feasibility study that was funded in 2018 by town meeting, um, and then additional money was, was received from a 2020 Mass Trails grant. Um, uh, the, the purpose of the feasibility study was to look at route options, planning and construction esti uh, estimates, easement challenges, and um, we're, we're up to, uh, we finished all of that, and the next step um, is to proceed to the initial design phase of the project, which is often also called the 25% design phase. Um, just, just to note, the, the feasibility study was commissioned to look at a possibility of a trail all the way from the uh, north, the, the Linfield town line, all the way to Wilmington. And we actually looked at it going even further uh, all the way to Route 62 in Linfield. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and we did look at options, taking it all the way through. Um, and as, but uh, as I'll discuss in a, in, in a minute, um, it, was it was decided to be too costly and too complicated to take the trail um, all that distance. Um, so we have had initial discussions with Mass, Mass DOT, Mass Department of Transportation. Um, uh, the the um, the way the way this the way the project would be funded is the town is responsible for design um, and it's responsible for permitting um, and then once the design is completed and it's completed to. Um, the requirements of MassDOT, 
then MassDOT assumes full responsibility for the project, uh, takes over, takes the project over, and and executes the construction. Um, so uh, they pay for basically they they pay for everything and they handle everything after the design. Um, so th there there are two stages of design. The twenty five percent is what I talked about, which is coming up, um, and then there once the the mass dot reviews that basically gives their approval on the 25% design. And then there's a second design phase, which is called the final design phase or the 75% design phase. And, <clears throat> um, and uh, so, so going into that, we, we, would, we would know that MassDOT is, is going to approve the project. Um, and uh, absolutely. And, um, uh, but the, and the town would be responsible for paying for for, for that second design as well. So we've had conversations with MassDOT. They're excited about the project. Um, they, uh, they don't see a, a, a problem necessarily with it making its way through the two design phases. Um, we have submitted the project initiation form, um, which is no commitment that it will be built. It's no commitment from MassDOT and it's no commitment from the town that, that all the fund, necessary funding would be um, approved. It basically just puts it on a, a list of projects that MassDOT will consider. And um, it'll, it, as it makes its way through their process, eventually MassDOT assigns it a time frame uh, when it would be built, subject to all the design um, and other approvals being done ahead of time. Um, but it, 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 it basically would uh, uh, put in a, a placeholder for, for a construction uh, time span. Um, the, the, other, the other piece um, somewhat related to this project is the vision for Willis Woods, which was commissioned, um, Linfield uh, paid for it, or Linfield, it, was, it was organized by Linfield, I think largely with grants, um, but it involved Linfield, North Reading, Peabody, Middleton, um, the Infrastructure River Watershed Association, and other, other, other participants. And it was to look at what, what might be done with that 650 acres, and I'll show some maps in a second exactly where it is, that 650 acres um, that sits in um, Linfield um, uh, and has largely been closed to the public uh, until very recently. It, it, it mostly belongs to the uh, Linfield Center Water District um, and they had um, prohibited um, uses of that land. Um, there, there'd been lots of illegal uses of that land, um, uh, but there were, there were no legal uses for that land other than uh, for water purposes. Um, the North Reading Trail will connect, um, if it, at least it will connect Ipswich River Park, if not South Parish Park, all the way to Willis Woods. Um, and then Willis Woods, um, would connect to the Independence Greenway, the, the photo that I showed on that first page, um, which then leads into the entire border to Boston Trail Network, um, going all the way from Salisbury, New Hampshire, all the way down into, in, into Metro Boston. So, so why does the trail make sense for North Reading? Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a creation of a town amenity that provides recreational facilities for all residents. Um, and it could potentially lead to increased property values. Um, parks, are, uh, parks and open space is something that, that's generally, just generally perceived as uh, improving um, the quality of life within a community. Uh, for an eventual investment of under $2 million, less any grants the state might receive, um, and that's including the two million is essentially uh, the 25% design phase that we're, we're looking at now, um, the 75% design phase and, and, a, and a contingency for potentially buying um, uh, property um, that we may need for easements. Um, and uh, the, you know, so the town, is, the town would be investing potentially $2 million um, and the, the state MassDOT would be spending nine and a half, $10 million um, to do the construction. Um, when the last conversation I had with, with uh, MassDOT, 
they said, well, it's nine and a half million now, but by the time we do it, it's probably going to be a lot more. It, 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 all, we all know that construction projects have a way of ballooning beyond the initial estimate, but this is not a risk for the town. That risk of, that risk of inflation is on MassDOT, not on the town. Um, there, um, there would be a new pedestrian bridge um, that, would be, uh, that would be built from the Elm Street Route 62, that, that photo that I showed on the first page, the otherwise known as the former Smith property, that would be quite high up. It would be you know, in, in the air because um, the Elm Street is very much higher than the, the river. So it would start at the street level and have a very gentle um, descent um, some two or 300 yards across the marshes um, with minimal disruption to the marsh. These would be widely spaced pilings with, with minimal dis disruption. Um, there would be parking, uh, parking there as well. Um, not clear right now how many cars, um, at least 10. Um, the, the, the parking, if, if you saw the picture, uh, people would not be parking on that narrow grassy area that uh, abuts the highway. Um, there would be a, a, a parking structure that would be built um, that would be sort of supported um, in the area beyond the, beyond the grassy area. There would also be a new bridge built from uh, Park Street Route 62 that would connect the high school, middle school directly to Ipswich River Park. Um, that, uh, the entrance to that is um, sort of in the middle of the uh, sort of middle of the playing field, sort of opposite the middle of the playing field. Um, people would uh, most likely cross the street there um, at the light that's already in place. Potentially they could be put in another pedestrian light directly opposite, but my guess is it would, it, it'll probably be just as easy to cross right at the existing light. Um, the, the total trail is two and a half, about two and a half miles. Maybe it's a little bit more given that we've rerouted it and the new route is slightly longer, but, but somewhere around two and a half miles. It's gonna be paved, it's gonna be handicapped accessible um, and it, you know, connecting um, Ipswich River Park, our, the parks in North Reading um, to, to Lin, Linfield, Willis Woods and beyond. Um, so, uh, and, and as a side note, um, there was a, uh, North Reading had an open space recreation plan that was revised uh, a couple years ago in March of 2020. And the, the having uh, increased number of trails and access to um, two trails as well as sidewalks was one of the top um, priorities of, of that open space recreation plan. But any questions from the North, from the LUC at the moment? Okay. So uh, this, is, this is what the, the trail network um, looks like today. Um, you know, there, uh, over here on the far right in the east is the Independence Greenway, which is that, as I said, that picture that I showed at the beginning that is the trail that goes uh, into Peabody. Um, they're actually building a, a bridge on, on the Independence Greenway that'll go over Route 1 um, and uh, connect into the section that goes all the way to the North Shore Mall and beyond into Salem. Um, there's uh, in, in, in here, just to the um, uh, west of Main Street in Linfield, this is where Bostick, uh, the Bostick plant is, the, the rail, the rail uh, road actually went right through the Bostick uh, factory uh, and serviced the Bostick factory back in the day. Um, and uh, then, then there is existing rail bed uh, just on the outside of the Bostic, Bostic plant um, that, uh, that runs through uh, the Lin this Linfield Willis Woods area and, and into North Reading. Um, there are also a handful of other trails. Um, these trails were uh, mostly created by ATVs. Um, they're kind of dug up, um, but they're, they're walkable. Um, and, and Linfield is, 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 is encouraging people to start to make their way in there um, to, to, take a look at, to, to take a look at this area. The, the, the border to Boston network um, is, is extensive. 
it's it, it's still a work in progress, but uh, a lot of it has been construction constructed. Um, it, it intersects the Independence Greenway uh, in um, in Peabody, in Peabody uh, just on the other side of Route One. This this tops field, this tops it runs right into this this line of that the, the rail trail that goes up to tops field. All right, um, Willis Willis Woods. So Willis Woods is this all this green area here in um, in in Linfield um, that used to be closed off because it belonged to the uh, Center Water District. Linfield, this this area down here that's a lighter green, Linfield uh, just acquired, um, and uh, um, and they're, they that, that's their only access into this land is through this new this new acquisition that that uh, access that's owned by the, the town of Linfield. There's there's access up here um, as well, uh, but that's actually Bostic property. Um, they don't seem to inter they don't they don't seem to complain people using it, but it, it's not public property. Um, so Linfield is looking to, to, to open this this whole area up um, to to build new trails and to get to get the public in there to, to use it. Um, it's it's a long way from any of Butters. I mean, there's you know you got uh, almost three quarters of a mile um, to the south before you you get to a Butters. The rail the rail bed is up here in the north. And then here's the town line, and and here's the the rail bed um, that's in within North Reading. All right, so. This this is the map the way the way I presented it at the um, select board meeting several weeks ago, and um, it was going it was it, the proposed route had it going through um, a, a couple of uh, private parcels um, in in rea in response to uh, letters from those property owners um, revised revised the view. Um, um, of the um, uh, of the trail to absolutely minimize its impact on uh, on on e people whom whom we would need easements. It it doesn't minimize the number of abutters. So if anything, there are more abutters with this plan than there were with the previous plan, but. We easements are not required from abutters. Easements are only required from the landowners on whose land the trail would actually pass. So the, the green lines here represent town owned properties. So uh, the, the green line is starting from the east here. That's up here in the, in the, in the top northeast corner is, is Elm Street where there would be parking and this bridge that would span all these wetlands into the dry area within um, within Riverwoods. Then the trail, it, 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 I'm showing it as a straight line, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, for instance, there'd be no reason to make it go through the wetlands. It would go around the wetlands, but it would make its way to the North Reading Linfield line so that it, so that when the, so people could walk into Willis Woods on the existing trails, Linfield will at some point probably improve those trails, but they're certainly walk walkable, as I showed in the pictures. They're, they're, they're a walkable trail, even, even as they are today. The, um, the land, this last, this little sliver of land when you first come into North Reading from Linfield is owned by the town of North Reading. The next parcel is owned by the town of Danvers. Um, uh, who I believe has already indicated that they're willing to uh, work with the town on this. The, the next parcel is privately owned. Um, and this parcel here is, is absolutely essential um, to the trail. Um, the question has been asked whether the trail could simply be this green line here and um, and, and, and be nothing more than access into river woods and potential access into Willis Woods? The answer is not if we want mass, 
MassDOT to pay for it. We've had several meetings with MassDOT and they've been absolutely clear. There has to be a, a way in from a road and a way out from a road. And, and, the, and the path in between has to be handicapped accessible meeting MassDOT standards. So even if there was access from the Willis Wood side into Linfield, it wouldn't fly because the trail in Linfield is not handicapped accessible. It's not paved. It's, it's, it's not a finished trail. It may be at some, and, Lin, and Linfield does not seem um, amenable, certainly not at this time of going through all the planning stages to get MassDOT in there. So it, 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 for any foreseeable time frame, um, this project is, it has to, has to exit the, 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 the area back in here, the, the river woods, it has to exit onto, um, onto uh, a town road. So the plan would be to um, gain access through this piece of property um, onto Apple Tree Lane, Apple, and, and then Apple Tree, Apple Tree Lane has some existing sidewalks which would need to be improved. Down onto Park Street, Park Street does not have sidewalks in this stretch, and it is admittedly in some places tight. MassDOT will cover the costs of, there's, there's um, telephone poles that have to be moved, there's, um, the street might have to be shifted slightly, um, the, um, there's some retaining walls that would have to be moved, um, fences that would have to be built. All of that is sort of de rigueur for, for MassDOT. They, they're aware of it. It's been pointed out to them. They have no, no problem with doing an on-road on trail, um, but there would, be, um, there would be sizable construction here on Park Street. The, then originally we were gonna take the trail Onto the, this is the old river, the, the railroad bed right here. We were going, originally we were going to run it right along the old railroad bed, but that was that's a, that was a, a problem for the landowner here. So we're now going to route the trail down Mount Vernon Street um, along the south side of Mount Vernon Street. Um, the, the south side has a lot more space um, for a sidewalk slash trail than the north side. Um, there is one home that is very close to the street on the south side. Um, we would need to work with MassDOT. We'd have to work with the designer. Um, it's pro it, I mean, I, it's, it's really a question of design, but it's probably most likely possible to shift the road slightly to move it away so um, th th that one house doesn't bear the brunt of, um, you know, of, of, of losing frontage. Um, the, the, the we would be running this trail entirely on, uh, on the frontage of, that belongs to the town. Um, then out at Haverhill Street, the plan is to run it north to Haver north up just beyond Railroad Avenue, across Railroad Avenue, and then through the marshes and onto this private property that belongs to Mr. Hines and uh, 112 Realty, which is the, uh, the auto body shop. Um, it would um, run entirely in wetlands, um, well away from any buildings, any businesses. Um, it, every all the wet all the wetlands would be um, mitigated. Any damage, any any construction issues, it all would be mitigated, um, and with minimal impact on the wetland, but well away, well away from any any homes, any structures. Would would run a, there's a fence that separates uh, the auto body shop from the wetlands. The wetlands are actually quite a bit uh, are lower than than the um, you can see the rail the rail bed was went ran right through the parking lot of what is now the auto body shop. It would be running in the in the wetlands that are actually lower than the uh, the, the rail trail, and it would run um, run and, and co connect into Ipswich River Park. Um, just just beyond uh, the 112 Realty property. In, in Ipswich River Park, here's the picture, here's where the bridge would come in from the high school. So uh, again, that we could have, cro you could have a crossing right there, more likely the people would cross over here on Douglas Road. Uh, this is all town owned land, whoops, this is all town owned land. Um, 
and then it would it would go into Ipswich River Park. It would it would it would. It, I'm showing a line here that cuts through Ipswich River Park, um, straight through. It, it it really that wouldn't necessarily be built that way. That it would it, once in it once it's in Ipswich River Park, it would um, follow the existing trails, um, except in here where the rail bed is, this, this is, this is a, a footpath right now. It's not a, it's not a finished trail. Then um, it would exit Ipswich River Park. And, and this is all town owned land over in here. And it would, would follow the rail bed. The, the, the rail bed's still there. Um, it would follow it um, to Chestnut Street where it would, it, where it would terminate. Um, oops. Um, it would it would go right by South Parish Park that would give additional parking right here where South Parish Park is. So it it it, it also um, would be possible um, uh, to run instead of running it to the Heinz property, theoretically possible to run it all the way um, south on Haverhill Street, and then enter the park through the town owned um, the town owned. Uh, road, uh, trail, path, whatever you want to call it, that, that's down here to the south of it. Um, it would be much, that's a, that's a fairly long run on Haverhill Street. Um, it's possible. Um, I, it's just, it would be, I think, a lot more desirable if we could work things out with Mr. Hines and 112 Realty to, to have, it, have it come through uh, the wetlands, um, the wetlands there. And the plan is to schedule meetings with Mr. Hines and 112 Realty in the in the in the near future, um, so so that's um, that's the that's the plan as it stands now. If you notice, it's dated 4-11-22. The previous one was dated three twenty one twenty two. So um, you know, there, there, I'm sure there will be more revisions to come. Any questions from LUC? I do. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, Rita. So the chair, is it okay? okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, I can't. Okay. A, a couple of quick questions, please. So by looking at it, the purchases, uh, possible purchase by the town of, would you say, two to three spots that we've chosen so far? That we yes. Could, uh, okay. Yes. There's, there's, yeah. there's three... The, 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 we've got it down to three, one of which is absolutely essential, one of which there's, there's no way around and the trail would simply have to stop. We couldn't move forward. The other two are highly desirable, but if worse comes to worse, we could go around them. Okay. Then Sykeson is one of, one is the Hines? Hines, Hines which, is, which, is, yep. which is this little stretch right here. And Mr. Right. Hines is on this call. Um, and, and then 112 Realty, which is the, owns that, which is the auto body shop. Okay. Any possible, uh, are there any sites that you know of that would, do you feel could possibly be taken by eminent domain? Uh, has the only I, let's not talk about eminent domain. None. Okay. Nope. Okay. So we don't know any of those yet. Everything, the three include. I mean, I would, I would, we, we can't, we can't, we're, we're prohibited by law to, to, to negotiate. And at this at this stage, I think we've gotten it down to the point where, um, even though even though some owners have said they, they 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 may or may not be willing to negotiate, I think we have to say let's let's see it through. At least this is my opinion. Let's let's take it through the design phase and um, and cross and cross that when we get there. Okay. Um, so it's three basically three sites. Then we're talking about so far. Three sites, and, and I and I have not I I've not spoke we, we we've not spoken directly um, to Mr. Mr. Hines or the 112 Realty. Okay, the grant application for the uh, deadline. Not, does it have to be for us to keep it open? Does it have to be before the October 2022 town meeting? Do we have to make any decisions before any particular time? Well, we no. will lose the no, grant. No, no. The, the, all right. So, so let's just talk about grants because there was there's been confusion on grants. So, we received a grant in August of 2020 for forty five thousand dollars. The original the original amount of money that was 
um, appropriated by a town meeting back in 2018 was for $55,000. So um, we've spent most of the combined money. Together, that's about $100,000. We've spent about $92,000, $91,000, $92,000. So this is about $8,000 left. I've used up the entire grant and there's about $8,000 left from the original 55,000 that, um, that we got from town meeting. So I, I, we haven't used up all the town meeting um, gave us. Okay, but- the, the, Okay, but no, no. Phil, so, yeah, so the question is, is there, a, is there an end time for the 10 million or 9 million? Oh, 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 okay, so, so, all right, so, all right, let's separate. There are two types of grants. The grant that I received, that we received in 2020, was a mass trails grant issued by DEP. Right. All right. I, I, I've submitted the application for another grant to be used towards this, um, towards the design phase that we're talking about right now. I've applied for it. That grant could be zero or it could be as much as $300,000. And, and, and that grant, we probably won't hear about that grant until July or August of this coming summer. When, when, I, when I wrote the application for that grant, one of the questions in the application is, has the town committed the matching funds? These are matching grants, so you, so it, which wouldn't be a problem since this is gonna cost so much more than $300,000. There's more than enough that, you know, if the town moves forward, there, there's plenty of money to match. So, and the, so the answer to that question is no, the town has not authorized the matching grants. And, and what went into the application was the plan is to um, authorize those matching grants at town meeting either in June or October. Okay, can it right. be so, so, Okay. So, but that's not, Rita, that's not, that's not mass dot. That's not, that's not the 10 million. So the 10 million, is there a deadline on that yet? No, there's, there's no deadline and there, there, there wouldn't be. The deadline is when we finish the plans. Okay, so do you know of the 10 million, can it be broken into two parts of a grant with the grantor if we need it? Well, if we I need don't it, understand. We need I mean, the, the, the 10 million is based upon the, the, um, the cost to build a segment of trail. So if you, if we shortened the trail, well, if so, if we shortened the trail, then it would be less. Okay. That I think Phil did clarify, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the, the answer, Rita, is that until until the town does what the $850,000 is going to do, which is have the design, you, you're not going to get the DOT approval on anything until that design is in place. Okay, is that correct, Phil? Yes, yes. And, and that could take, that could take two years, that could take 15 years. I mean, the the, the risk is, is there's a lot of money available over the next five years, thanks to the infrastructure that, that Congress just passed a few months ago. So, so some of these things might have been more difficult even a year or two ago, but, but right now the, the state, this money all comes, the, the $10 million, it's being administered by MassDOT, but it comes from the federal government. So, um, so there is a chance that if we waited too long, there might not be as much funding available, but, but that's an unknown risk. Okay, no, that answers the question there, thank you. Uh, All right, Phil, why don't, you, why don't you finish up the presentation and then we can- Oh, okay, I mean, yeah. All right, so, um, so this, this, this is just an, uh, a, 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 um, a close up of the, um, of the connection to Apple Tree Lane, and I, I, I didn't, I didn't redo this this particular slide. We're not going up here through the Delisle property. It's going to come down here through um, the uh, Mount Vernon Street. And and here's a close up of what it looks like at the Hind property. So um, you can see that the uh, the Hinds own. Uh, it, it's sort of like a. a it's, it's rental. It's, it's it's rental units here at 114 Haverhill Street, um, 
and we would, this, so there are two separate lots. There's 114 Haverhill Street, and I think this is zero off Haverhill Street. We would, we would have to cross over a little tiny piece of one, the, the parcel that's 114 Haverhill Street. This, this little piece here that's zero, that zero off Park Street, I think it is, that belongs to the town. So this little, that little, that little triangle, that little crick is, that's actually town land. And then this is this is Heinz land here, um, all all very very wet, all all swamp, um, and then running along a, along the in the swamp here below the 112 uh, Haverhill Street line. So it just just to show you a little clearer what it, what it looks like. So we're a long long way from from the building and his and 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 the, and the auto body building. Um, okay. Cost, costs and challenges. So the um, the we're looking at um, eight hundred fifty thousand um, dollars less whatever grants that we get um, for the initial design phase. That is to take the trail all the way to Chestnut Street with that bridge that goes over um, where where you saw those pilings. Um, uh, and um, if uh, if we wanted to save a few hundred thousand dollars of design fees, we could end the trail right in Ipswich River Park and not go any, and not go to Chestnut Street. Um, so, um, you know, we, we, we have a choice. Um, I, I we won't know in, it, it's highly, highly unlikely um, that we would know by the town meeting about the, the, the grant. We would almost certainly know about it by October. Um, easements, as I said, you know, there's, there's right now we're down to three easements that we would need or th three easements that we would need. It's, I guess it's technically four parcels, but two of them are owned by Mr. Hines. Um, um, uh, but we're, we're prohibited from doing negotiations at this point. Um, we can talk to landowners, sort of take their temperature, um, 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 but we, we can't make an offer. We, we can't, we can't discuss, um, you know, any anything that we we might or might not do when the time comes. So, um, other than sort of taking people's temperatures, um, you know, that that's sort of that's sort of the end of what we can do um, prior to the twenty five percent design. Once the twenty five percent design is done, we need to do we need to secure the easements before going into the, the final design. Um, and the and the the estimated cost for the final design is I've been told it's roughly it plan on it being roughly the same as uh, as the 25% design they're, 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 in terms of labor and, and costs they're, they're about the same. The, the time frame to get this done, you know five to ten years th these things these things take time. Um, even even if we finished got through the whole both design phases, um, we still need to fit into a slot within the mass dot. Um, availability. Um, so these things do take time. Um, the, again, MassDOT's going to cover the full cost of construction. Um, even, even with inflation, the, the burden of inflation falls on them, not on us. Um, it includes the cost for the trails, sidewalks, new ut relocation of the utilities, wetland mitigation, parking. I mean, it, 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 it basically covers everything. Um, and and MassDOT is enthusiastic about the project. They, uh, they they said that if this was just a standalone project uh, in North Reading and didn't connect to Linfield and then to the Independence Greenway, they 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 wouldn't be so excited about it. But they see this as a as a as a critical link um, in the in the in the Massachusetts uh, trail network. All right. So um, let me go through these. These frequently asked questions, um, since they may have, they, they could be crossing your mind as well. Um, I've heard that the proposed trail would cross many residents' yards. Is this true? Um, the, the, the trail route is currently planned would cross uh, five parcels. It's actually down to um, only um, uh, only three or three or four parcels now. Um, and I, I, should, I, I didn't have a chance to rewrite this question, but, but we, we've minimized the impact um, on residents' yards. It's, it's, it's basically not crossing anybody's yard 
anymore. Um, it will cross in um, in wetlands um, or on, on or through an existing easement, um, but there would be no new easements required that would go through somebody's yard. Um, uh, so the other question comes up: even if the trail doesn't go through people's yards, even if even if an easement is 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 not required what will be done to protect abutters from pedestrian and bicycle traffic on the trail. So a lot of the abutters have suggested that the town needs their approval to grant an easement. If you're an abutter, no easement is being requested where the, the, it would be, it would, the trail would be either on, um, in most cases, it would be on town owned land, which is the, um, the abutment on the on the on the on the public roadway, uh, or it's 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 parkland, or or otherwise um, a, an easement would have been granted. So, if you're an abutter, you you know there is no there is no easement process. There's no approval. There's no approval needed from you other than your vote at town meeting. Um, but to protect you, that to protect you to keep to to isolate the trail from abutters, um, fences will be put in place along the trail to prevent people from crossing from the trail into private property. Um, plantings and um, other, uh, other, other items that can, can block the view of the trail can also be installed. This again would all be covered by MassDOT. Um, I will say that if you actually talk to people on some of the other trails, um, where they were originally very insistent on, on sturdy fences and, and, and that they didn't want any access from their property onto the trail, that as these things became um, more and more, um, people became more and more used to them, they actually wanted access to, these, to the trail. And they put in gates and things like that so they could get into the trail. Now, if we're, since, we're running the, since we're running the trail Originally, it wasn't planned to go onto sidewalks, um, except maybe on Railroad Avenue. Um, now that the trail is going to be, a considerable portion of it is going to be on sidewalk, it, it, there's, there's a limit to how much blockage you would be able to do from a sidewalk. So the, the, a, it's going to, a sidewalk is a sidewalk, and it would be in, in front of the house. Um, and um, so there wouldn't be a plan necessarily to put a, a fence or, or plantings to block a sidewalk from, from the houses that ab abut the street. Um, some of the trail will be constructed in wetlands. What will be done to protect these areas? Um, all, all the wetland rules, uh, local, state, and federal, they all have to be, they all have to be complied with. And, and those are the same, this, it's been suggested that why can, why can the town build or why can the state build in the, in the wetlands when I can't put a fence near my wetlands or I can't do this on my wetlands? The same rules will apply to the building of this trail in the wetlands as it would apply to any homeowner or business that wants to approach the wetlands. Um, platforms will be above the floodplain. There, there's been some questions that somehow the, 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 the the, 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 the boardwalks or the bridges will flood, they'll be high. Is that to say that if we got a 2006 Mother's Day storm again, that, the, that nothing would be flooded? Probably not, it would probably flood, but so did Ipswich River Park for that matter. Um, um, there's been some concern about wildlife living on or near the trails and that this would be disruptive. Yes, during construction, it, it certainly could be disruptive to, to animals that live along it, but the, the long-term impact is gonna be me, minimal. Um, trails routinely coexist with nature in public parks, even in wildlife protection areas, the Audubon Reserve in Topsfield, uh, Plum Island. Um, there's plenty of examples where people have trails um, and, and the, animals, the animals coexist. Um, Will the trail be primarily used for bicycles? It's, it, this thing is often called a bicycle path. Um, no, it, it won't be primarily used by bicycles. I mean, the, the adult cyclists may use it from time to time, but the expectation is that the primary use would be for walkers, um, joggers, 
people with taking their kids out for a walk, taking their kids on a bike. I mean, to the extent that a child's riding a bike, yes. Um, the, the, the trail would provide a, a safe off street way for kids to potentially bike to school. Um, but um, it, it's, it's not like you're gonna see a lot of racing bikes tearing down this, this few miles of trail. Um, will parking areas and crossings on business, busy roads disrupt traffic? There was some particular concern on, um, on Elm Street that having parking on Elm Street would, would somehow disrupt the traffic on Elm Street Route 62. Um, this is going to be designed by people that build roads. They're gonna take into account um, that the, the, the number of cars on Elm Street, they're gonna, they're gonna create lines of sight that allow for people to get in and out of the parking with minimal disruption. Um, I can't say for sure. I, I, I don't think there'll be any traffic light there. Um, there's no plan to put a traffic light there. There may be pedestrian crossing signals at some other places, um, like for instance, on Haverhill Street. Um, but these, these are short cycle lights. Um, they, they're, they're, they, they exist on some very busy roads like Route 1 right now. They, they're in Topsfield, uh, Route 1 has, has a crossing, Route 97 has a crossing. Um, they're all over the place if you look for them. And they, and they, gen they, really, are, they really do not disrupt traffic. Um, where are there examples of similar trails? Lots of the towns are building them, um, are either in the process of building them or have recently finished them. Middleton, Danvers, Peabody, Topsfield, Boxford, Newburyport, Linfield, um, they're, they're all over the place. I mean, the easiest one, if you want to see what they're like, is to just to go and walk the Independence Greenway. Um, it, it's right at, right at the North Reading line, and it's a beautiful trail along the Ipswich River. Um, very much, what we, and, and you can see the, you can see the abutters in the, in the, in the distance, um, so you, you can get a good sense of what a well-built trail is like. Uh, will the town have to pay for new sidewalks? Nope, that's going to be paid for the Mass, Mass Dot. Will the trail need to be lit or plowed in the winter? No plans for the trail to be lit. We're not going to run street lights down the trail. Um, it won't be plowed in the winter, I suppose, unless somebody wants to go out with their snowblower. Um, it will be a dawn to dusk operation. Um, I could see people cross country skiing it in the winter. Um, will the town need to cover the ongoing costs for trail maintenance? If so, how expensive will that be? Well, that was one of the first questions that, that, that I sort of looked into when, when, when we had this project. I met with a number of people that were running trails, not only in Massachusetts, but in other, other communities and other parts of the country. And there was unanimity that for a paved trail, a paved trail requires less maintenance than a, than a, a, a cinder trail. Um, we're, we're talking one to 2,000 miles per year. So we're talking $2,500, $5,000 a year for, for, the North, for the North Reading Trail. Um, there are ways to even mitigate, offset some of that cost. We could use volunteer labor, labor high school students, um, but we're, we're not looking at sort of a huge ongoing expense. The, one person has expressed concern, well, it's, it's paved, the routes are gonna come through and we're gonna have to repave this thing every five or 10 years. Uh, I, I don't think that's, I mean, the Independence Greenway has been down longer than that. Um, go and walk it. I, I, that's not to say a route doesn't buckle the road, the, the pavement somewhere, but I think we're looking at, you know, a, a, you know, 20, 25, 30 years before it would need that kind of, um, that kind of remediation. Um, when communities raise the issue of building a recreational trail, um, one of the comments that always comes up is, is it safe? Is, this, is, the, is the trail going to be used as a conduit to bring crime into the town? Um, and police chiefs within North Reading, it's, 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 there is no increase in crime where, where these trails are built. The, the, the crime rates before and after the trail are identical. It, 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 there's very little to no crime on the trail themselves. Um, it, it's, just, it's just sort of a, a, a non-issue. A non, a non and if need be, 
you know, we could probably organize other police chiefs to come in and, 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 and talk. Um, but, but this has been gone over. Um, th there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing new here. Um, another question that often comes up is what is the liability for property owners or the town when granting a trail easement? So I could see Mr. Hine, for example, saying, well, there's a trail now crossing my, my land. Um, you know, if somebody falls down and hurts themselves and it's still my land, am I, am I liable for it? And the answer is no. There are um, specific, there's a specific chapter um, in, in, the, in, in the mass laws that protect landowners from, from um, litigation uh, and protects the town from that matter, with the exception being gross negligence. Um, so as long as we're not talking about gross negligence, um, you know, th there's, there's no liability. Um, will ATV, dirt bikes, and other motorized vehicles be allowed on the trail? No. Um, the, all, the, 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 the bridges and the trail, um, at least the off-road portions of the trail, would be built strong enough to be able to take a, a light vehicle, like, a, like an ambulance or a very small fire truck. So you could get emergency services into the, into the woods. Um, right now, um, there is a lot of ATV use um, um, within River Woods and Willis Woods. The expectation is once we build um, handicap accessible trails, there'd be very little attraction for dirt bikes to go in there. There'll be other, there'll be people in there. Um, th th right now, this is, this is highly, this is almost empty all the time. The, the dirt bikes have it to themselves. We open this up to the public, ATVs aren't gonna go in there. I know there, there's been concern about people on Wright Street. Um, at one point, um, several years ago, we were envisaging the trail um, going down Wright Street um, and connecting through the Caviello and um, the Smith properties at the end of Wright Street into, into River Woods. Um, but uh, again, the, 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 the property owners um, really did not, uh, they, they weren't the only property, there, there, was a, uh, se there were several other property owners as well that really didn't um, want it going there. And um, so we abandoned um, that approach. It was a roundabout approach anyways, um, and, 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 and have pursued what you're seeing in the more recent plans. But nevertheless, there still seems to be some concern of the residents on Wright Street that people would be uh, driving down Wright Street to get access to the, the trail. And, and, and I just don't, I see that once the, once the new bridge, once the parking is put in place on Elm Street and there's this handicapped bridge on Elm Street, which goes directly into the park, uh, I, I think there's, there'd be almost no need for people to use Wright Street for accessing this, this trail at all. Um, I'd also heard from people where they were complaining that people go down Wright Street and cross through their properties with the dirt bikes. Again, I would think that if anything, you should support this project if you live on Wright Street, because it's gonna take all of that off of your street at this point. Wright Street will be quieter once this is done because all of that traffic right now, which has no choice but to go down Wright Street, will have a choice in, in the future. Do trails reduce or butter property values? So we, we've heard, oh, you know, having this, this, this trail behind my house is, is, and the answer is no, there's no evidence at all. There's been a, a number of studies that have gone on. You can Google them. Um, and there's no evidence at all that it reduces. There, there is some minor evidence that it could in fact increase um, property values, but more likely it just doesn't do much of anything to property values of those direct abutters. Um, will the trail increase noise and crime? Well, we talked about crime. It, it really, it, it, the, the trail, the crime on the trail would, would probably be the same as the, the crimes North Reading as a whole. I mean, North Reading isn't a totally crime-free community. So is it possible that something could happen on the trail just as it could happen anywhere in town? Well, sure. But would it be any more likely on the trail than anywhere else? Probably not. And, and, and now that a lot of the trail is actually running on sidewalks, you know, it's not in the woods. It's not, it, it's, it's really not, um, um, it, 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 it's really in plain sight. So again, just summarizing, 
Um, what would North Reading lose by not funding the trail? It, it's going to lose the, the two bridges, the bridge connecting the high school and the bridge connecting Elm Street with the parking area into Riverwoods. It's going to lose two and a half miles of the ADA compliant trail, um, the, new, the new sidewalks on Park Street. And I didn't update this question, but it's on, on Park Street, Applewood Lane, and on, on Mount Vernon Street that would be paid for by MassDOT. Um, and um, it's going to enhance pedestrian safety. safety. Um, it, it'll put crossings in in places where people may be crossing right now. Um, it's certainly going to make it easier for people to get from the high school um, into Imager River Park. It certainly improves the safety there. Um, I know Mount Vernon Street is a narrow street. People walk on it all the time. The residents walk their dogs on it. Um, and it, it's narrow and, and the cars can zip down it. By putting a, a sidewalk, it's actually going to be probably wider than a than an, than an average sidewalk. Um, you're providing a, a, a great deal more pedestrian safety than you have today. Um, and, and finally, just, just a few pictures. Um, the, the picture down here is Apple Tree Lane. That's where the easement connects into the, the rail bed in the woods. Um, and, and then Apple Tree Lane up here, there, there's existing sidewalks, which would probably have to be widened, um, and Park Street uh, from Apple Tree Lane up to Mount Vernon Street. Uh, Mount Vernon Street is, 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 is out of the picture here. Um, but you can see that Park Street is narrow, that there would be um, considerable uh, redesign and retaining walls that have to be put in place. Um, you know, to uh, to make that happen, um, the but utility poles that would be moved, um, et cetera. So that's that's that. Do you want me to end the screen sharing, or how, how, what do you, Ken? What do you want me to do? You're on mute, Ken. We're probably all set to. Um... You can leave the screen share up for a couple of minutes and see if anybody wants to refer back to it. But um, so what I do at this point is, uh, as we've done a Oop, you Bill, want on mute. Yep. Yeah. Bill, I don't know if you've been catching up with people as they've been joining in and adding names to our list. Um, yeah, I've been trying to keep up with it. Also, I, I just want to take a minute to remind people who have joined us in progress, just that you know and you're aware that uh, this is this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM. Uh, so it'll be available to view at a later time, I'm sure. Um, so what I'd like to do is take some time here for, to allow the land utilization members to ask questions um if they have any so um do any of you have any specific questions on the presentation for bill for phil and i have some questions but there are some statements questions but i know i already asked some questions first so <laughs> i i have some whenever you're ready if you want somebody else to go first or not that's fine just I can't raise my hand because I don't have a picture there. Um, well, I'd ask one question, uh, Phil. Uh, you, you're talking about an installation of sidewalks on, um, and I know you've clarified that this isn't strictly and maybe not even predominantly a bike trail, but um, so would the bikes be expected to be riding on the sidewalks or? Are they no, I, 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 I well, you know, I, I, that's not to say they couldn't, um, but I would expect that where there where there's a street, uh, adult adult cyclists would be riding on the street, children would be riding on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anybody else other than Rita at this moment? We'll let Rita wait a minute. If anybody else has any questions from the LUC. Um, I can only just speak up if you do, because I can only see so many of you on the screen at once. If not, then Rita. Oh, Rita, then uh, go go ahead. 
Uh, Phil, is that the end of your presentation for now? Yeah, yeah, no, ask, okay. ask whatever you want to ask, ask Rita. No, okay. I want all the facts brought out that are true and factual, and a lot has been said over the past couple of selectmen's meeting and, you know, Facebook, but I can't count that because it's not, you know, the selectmen's meeting that I, that I heard all those, but of what we did here, um, Phil, I think you've done an awful lot of work over two years with the COVID, and thank you for updating these. This is a lot clearer for me to look at. But for a member of LUC that is, is going to ask for up to $2 million, um, and I know that obviously I cannot answer questions intelligently to anybody other than what you showed tonight, which is great. But there were a lot of comments made uh, past here. So I am not having walked it yet to see a lot of the things that you've shown. And if I do my checklist before I pass on something, um, I think there are some issues that have jumped out in the past that we heard at the selectmen's meeting. I don't think six weeks is enough to answer everything that people have asked and, and make them feel comfortable with it. I know that we have not and in the past normally have gone to um, other committees, you know, made our presentation to recreation, to conservation, uh, to the school, to show them the benefit of, of that, um, and to other groups in town. Having said that, uh, I, I cannot say that I'm prepared to go forward in six weeks that we've asked all the que questions. I don't feel comfortable that we haven't gone before the selectmen, finance, um, to ask for their vote of confidence in this. So because of that, there are areas that I see that my feeling has always been, if I live next to an area that's owned by the town, or if it's owned by a business, or if it's zoned for a uh, building, I understand that I run the risk, uh, if it's a business, that there could be a large development or something put in or a park put in. So that part, I feel that we buy our land next to some, a park or one of those things with the idea that the parcel could eventually be developed. Uh, this here, on this impact that I'm looking at on three or four people, uh, five people, I wanna be able to take the time more than the next five weeks because I don't think we have everybody behind us on this uh, to see what's fair and what's not fair. Uh, and if it is actually on town land, as you're saying it is, and I believe uh, that to be true. So I'm not in favor of splitting somebody's land. You answer that. Great, you know, that we're not splitting the property. If you live beside it, beside it, that's a little bit different in my opinion on it. Um, so I think that with only six weeks left, that I would prefer to, at this point, um, really listen, ask the our committee. I would be more apt to say, I'd like to take it off of uh, the warrant for the June, have four, five, six open meetings where we're talking to the neighbors and anybody else that shows up um, and have time to go before conservation, select board, fire police, and ask all the other questions that had come out and possibly be prepared to go in October. We're not gonna lose anything on the grant and certainly as a show of a sign of good faith to all that those still that might have questions and really need to see the facts, um, I would like to withdraw it from the war article. Um, and then I think we can explain a lot more and I think we'd be in a much better position in four or five months to ask for selectman finance, uh, the uh, conservation that have had a chance to vet our facts before we bring it to town meeting. So at this time, after all the members speak, if they feel the same way or they have a better plan than that, um, I'd like to hear it. Otherwise, um, I'd like to see if our committee is in agreement to withdraw the article for the uh, June town meeting. Phil. Phil. Yes. Can you take down take down the screen? Because we, we can that way we just have more availability of seeing who's up and who's not. Okay, thank you. Do, you, do you want to be host again? Sure, why not, you know? I... <clears throat> Your host. Okay, so LUC members, 
does anybody else have any questions that they looks like Abby does or comments? Well, that's okay, Abby. I will hold off until I talk to the LUC. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, any LUC members have any other comments based on Rita's comments or questions directly on the presentation or moving forward? All right. Ken, I, I'm sorry, I was trying to say, you know, I, I, I do have to say that these are some pretty significant changes um, to what has been discussed um, as far as moving forward with putting it in the June meeting. These are some pretty significant changes as far as the actual route itself and going through sort of on the street rather um, than through land behind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on how everybody else feels and what else is brought up, I'm inclined to agree that June seems like it could be a little bit rushed considering the magnitude of the changes to the route. Okay. Anyone else? I agree with Kate. Therefore, you agree with Rita? Sort of, yes. <laughs> I know but, I, don't, but don't tell her that. that. <laughs> I think, did we vote? at a last meeting to continue this or did we vote? No, we voted before to support the rail trail. We have, ne we have not since, you know, in, in going forward, we did not have a vote at the last meeting. We discussed and it though, right? We discussed, and we discussed that we would talk about having a vote tonight. Okay, yes. that's what I thought. I have no problems holding off until October. I know it's kind of hard for Phil. He's been working so hard on this and. I, I'm not but, opposed to it either. Okay. All right, well, let, let me, okay. I'm not gonna open up the floor yet just because she's got so much influence with the finance committee. Ab, Abby, if you would like to speak to the point then we will let you ask a question. Um, yeah, um, actually, Ken, I have two questions. One is, my understanding is that the paved trail will be 10 feet wide. Does this hold true for the sidewalks? In other words, will the sidewalks also be 10 feet wide? I, I don't know, Abby. Um, I, 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 my guess is they probably would be a little bit less. I think it may depend on uh, it may, it, I think that'll come out of the design phase. You know, um, you know. The, the question is, how how much can we get? If we could get um, ten feet or twelve feet, then then we will. If if it's if if we only can get five or six feet in in certain spaces, maybe that's all we settle for. But I don't think we'll know that till after the design phase is done. And then my second question concerns um, who bears the burden of the expense of. Um, the easements. The town would. I mean, if we have to, if we want, if we need to purchase the easements. Right. No, that, that, that that's in the, in that $2 million number I built in, you know, sizable money for easement acquisition. I mean, we're dealing with a lot fewer properties now um, than we were, uh, but um, uh, no, I, they, they, when we finish with a 25% design, then, um, we would we would negotiate with the with the landowners um, and try to come to terms with for for an amount, and then um, it would require going to town meeting, and um, getting getting funding for that amount and funding for the the final phase of design. Um, but I, if I heard you correctly, Phil, the um, two million dollars would include the cost of easements. Yeah, roughly. So, I, yes, yep, yep. Yeah, the first time for about eight fifty, and the second time for about eight fifty, less any potential grants that come along. Right. So I'm assuming that in fact, going to town meeting for additional funds for easements would not be necessary if they're included in the two million. Right. In the, in the I mean, it's it's just it's three different chunks. 
Right. So, yes. Uh, and, and there are grants available to purchase property as well. You know, I, I've not, I, I haven't applied for any because we weren't at a point where we could do it, but there, there, and I don't know, you know, how much that would be or what the likelihood of getting them, but, but there is a possibility of grants for those as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So <clears throat> I will also add in for everyone's knowledge, but in particular, the uh, members of the LUC that, um, Today, I was uh, given copies of uh, four or five letters from people who have great concerns about this. And uh, some of them are the ones who we have to look for easements for or whatnot, um, that they have handed in to the uh, <coughs> board, um, declaring that they have no interest in uh, this project at this time, which at this point, and I, I'm not going to say that those, uh, you know, that, that anything about that other than uh, obviously, if that were to change, it, it's going to require some time and some effort. So, uh, you know, I, I guess at this at this time, you know, if uh, somebody wants to make a motion to uh, take and hold off until October town meeting so that we have more time to present this and delve into it. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, get more involvement, uh, then I would, I would entertain that, so. Um, Dan, make a motion. Yes, Rita. I'll make a motion. Uh, at this time, I would like to um, vote to withdraw our article for the warrant as of today, 4-12-2022, for the June warrant of 2022. Um, and then when we choose to go back, we don't. I don't want to put a date when we go back on it. Oh, I just want to okay. withdraw this one. That's sufficient for now. Is anybody second that? A second. OK. Do we have any discussion concerning that? All right. Um, so I'm going to just go with a voice uh, vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. Huh? Opposed <laughs> and one abstention. OK. All right. So that will mean that we'll hold off. There will not be a warrant article on June town meeting. To people before you all quit, start running away. <laughs> um, we will still be trying to do it. Probably won't be within the next two weeks, as I had talked about in the beginning, uh, because we'll want some more time to prep. But we will uh, take and be having hearings. Uh, to try and get more information out. We will be contacting those of you most directly involved to have talks with you and uh, get your concerns. I know you have your concerns, but you also have seen in the last two to three weeks that we have made changes in some of the paths to try and meet some of those requests. So um, we go forward with that. If you uh, wish to be notified by those meetings, you can contact any of us. I'm, I, I've shared my email address with uh, many of you. And uh, you know, if you get in touch with us, we will not expect that you're just gonna look in the transcript to see when those notices are. We want your feedback and input. You're the people who have shown the most interest and concern in this project. So it makes the most sense to have you as directly involved as possible. So please let us know and we will do the best that we can to uh, get that word out to you. Um, other than that, I guess, does anybody from the general audience have any 
question or comment they'd like to add in that they think will be of value to us. I'm not seeing anyone and I'm not hearing anyone. So oh. I'll speak up. This is uh, Stephen O'Sullivan. I'm uh, the owner of Nine Apple Tree Lane. Um, so I'll just I'll just let you know that you'll get a letter from me or from my lawyer. Um, whatever cost you have already built into this, I'd say double it because I will fight this until I lose my last penny. Um, the lack of transparency in this whole process has just been horrendous. I mean, I, I was lucky. I, someone gave me a heads up on the selectmen's meeting that this thing was going to go through my front yard. So um, I, I will just put that on the record. That I'm probably one of the top five people getting impacted by this. So you will hear a lot more from me um, as we go through this process and, and we'll just see where it goes. But I will just tell you that now that it's not, it's, it, I won't go easy. How's that? Well, would no. you kindly spell your last name for me? Yep. O apostrophe S. U L L I V N. Thank you. No, nobody, well. no, nobody's asking you to go easy, and I appreciate your feedback, and uh, I appreciate your attendance tonight. Okay. Um, Thank you. You know we uh, have are trying to get this with our audience tonight, and with, with the work that we've been doing, we're not trying to make this. Uh, uh, a secret mission. So uh, we appreciate, you know, appreciate your attendance tonight. So yeah, thank you. It, it sure feels secret though, because um, I read, the, I read the, I read the feasibility study when it came out. Because I mean, the trail is or was going to be in my backyard, which, you know, it's there, and I'd see it, and you know, I have neighbors that would be impacted by it. But this is, th this is my front yard. My neighbor next to me, he mm -hmm. with me as well in this. And then on top of that. The apple tree lane community i mean I, I know you're talking about parking on elm street but people are going to park on this street out in front here so all my neighbors in this area are going to be negatively impacted by this by 15 20 25 cars every weekend parking and, the street so and, and we will and we will give you the opportunities to share those concerns at, at the at the hearings then okay we look forward to that and it just won't be my concerns it'll be my neighbors as well so. and again <laughs> that's the, bring, I'm, just, bring I'm them on. I'm, 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 I'm the mouthpiece. How's that? That's okay. No, glad to have again. That's good. We want the word out there. Okay. So thank you for your attendance tonight. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. So, okay. Thank you. Anyone looks else? Like, looks like Christine, Ms. Berkmeyer has a, has a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Chris, Christelle, right? Thank you. Yep, Christelle. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that the Lambert property will also not be up for use um, by the town. It's no longer the Lambert property. <laughs> it is no longer the Lambert property. Correct. No, and I understand that. So, thank but uh, thank you for sharing that. So, all right, uh, you're all welcome to stay for the rest of our uh, business that we have to handle tonight, uh, or you're welcome to leave. Uh, I can, I will assure you that. Uh, our discussion as far as the rail trail goes has ended for the evening. I will not go back on that. So thank you all for, uh, for your attendance and uh, we'll carry on. Um, LUC members, did you get your minutes from Bill? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you have a chance to read through them? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, we have two sets of minutes that we're doing. Two Are sets you of approving them. both. Oh, I, hmm. I only sent one set. Huh? I only sent one set. No, you the, uh, said some from last Monday, too. From right? last Monday. That was the one set that I sent. Yeah, I was talking about the ones from last Monday. Um, I had, because we didn't go over the minutes last Monday, we also had March 8th that has not been approved yet. You sent out before Monday's meeting, March 8th. Oh. So. Which one are we voting on now first? I believe that 
Phil's motion, would you clarify that that it's for that, April? That was for the month. That was for last last Monday's April fourth. Uh, April fourth. Uh, April fifth. Oh, Monday was the fourth. So Monday the fourth. Okay. Do we have a second for approving the minutes from April fourth? I'll second. Thanks, Kate. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Before that meeting, Bill sent out minutes for March 8th. Did everybody get those? Yeah, but I, hmm? I'd have to find them. <laughs> I, I remember reading them, not having a problem, but. Okay, we'll take a couple minutes. We can use a minute. They were sent on the March 29th, if anybody. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, there they are. All right. So if everyone could take a minute to read through those. Okay. Anyone said everybody's had a chance to read through those. If somebody would make a motion to accept, I make a motion to accept those minutes. Uh, Do we have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Boy, it's getting louder. <laughs> <laughs> Motion carries. All right. So we had a meeting um, last Monday, joint meeting with recreation. Um, so we discussed the community garden. So uh, Kate, is, not, is there anything new to discuss as far as that is concerned or just that you just cheerfully that you did get approval to hold that spot for two years. So um, anything else you're gonna work forward from there? We haven't given you much time and you're still recovering from your trip. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no news, nothing to update. No updates in that department. Okay. Okay, can I just ask a question? Do you have, and I'm sorry if you've given this number and I just haven't, I've missed it. What, how much money you actually need to get a, this started off the ground? Sure, so there are, I, I think that the best way to answer that is that I mean, it can range so greatly. Um, you know, in Andover, when they started their community garden, grassroots effort, grassroots funding, $5,000. Um, but it was a very rough structure. Um, and then the town of Wakefield uh, put you know, several upwards of, uh, you know, I believe it was somewhere in the ballpark of twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 into theirs. So the best way to answer that is going to be once we're able to form the subcommittee to make decisions on what types of materials, what types of fencing, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it, it would really depend on what the committee felt was they wanted to proceed with and what type of funding we can pursue. Okay. I'm sorry, that's so vague, but. No, 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 I, I just, can just, no, it's perfect. Yeah, um, it can be done so many different ways and we want to make sure that it's done cohesively and well thought out and everything is in place um, 
and well put together. But beyond that, the scope of what that can look like, it can just be so, so different from one yeah. extreme to the other. Okay, just that was kind of um, just me wanting to, as I come across um, possible grants and with, you never know what's gonna come across. So I, if I can find money, I'll pass it along. Thank you, Maggie. All right, there's nothing uh, new to report as far as the nature walk is concerned either. Um, we've obviously done the rail trail presentation. Uh, Rita, do you have any finance report to, for tonight? Famous last week, uh, none of the deposits have been made yet, but there will be two uh, uh, bench deposits going in uh, probably within the week uh, for, for probably an additional 5,000. But as of this point, it's what it was uh, at the last meeting. Okay. Um, okay, are there any questions on finance? Um, any um, under other business? Um, so where are we at with the memorial tree for, well, memorial, honorary tree for Maureen? <laughs> until she picks a spot. Okay. She hasn't done it. She's not in a hurry to do it. So do we put a do we put an ornament on it for Lynn or what? <laughs> um, so, I know. So I just I just you know we're getting into it's did we already garden club president did we already have Arbor Day or not? No, I was just looking that up. It's um the end <laughs> of the month. June, I thought it was in June. Yeah, I thought it was June. No. No. Um, Arbor Day is in April. Yeah. Um, I think it's in April. Is Arbor Day the same as Earth Day? No. No. But it's when it's. I'm. I'm not sure. <laughs> to, to answer your question, I. Friday, April. 29th. I don't remember. What? Friday, the, April 29th. A, April 29th. That's what I thought it was. Um, yeah, they and they're planning on putting a tree in, and this just got dumped on in my lap the other yesterday, the day before. That the girl who's who usually runs it can't run it. So we have to I'm regrouping. What are we doing? Planting a tree. <laughs> And got, there will be a small um, ceremony planting the tree. Plants a tree every year for yeah. Arbor Day. I've been for 20 years. So. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it will be a native species. And beyond that, that's I haven't gotten that far. So this is the garden club activity? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. The garden club will run it. And we'll work with Marty to determine where. We're going to plant it this year. Um, last year's tree is still doing well. So that's good. All right. Um, also on the other business, Rita, you were going to check on the Goddard property 61A um, status. I believe it's being talked about. Um, the sale and that's what I heard at one of the last um, uh, meetings that someone is talking to uh, Mrs. Goddard to see if that is in fact true. Who is talking to? From where? Town Hall. Town Hall. Yeah. So is, it, address? is it a 61A? I'm under the impression it is, which is why I thought they were talking to her. Can okay. you know the address? Haverhill Street next to Ipswich River Park. <laughs> Thanks, that narrows it down a little bit. There you go. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have any other, other business?
Bill. You ready? Are you ready? You have to write it down. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. Well, I'll second it. <laughs> Don't have to ask for that one. A, okay. a unanimous one. <laughs> All right. So, is there any discussion on adjourning? Yeah, Phil, so thank you very much for bringing we, everything we, up to speed so quickly. And, Tony, it was nice to see you tonight. Although, I must say, Nicholas is a better looking. You know. <laughs> I, I apologize. My elderly mother is upstairs, and I just brought her up, and I keep on listening with one ear up there. Uh, and I make sure that, yeah, it's like I'm waiting for the thunk. Uh, oh no! Oh dear! Only good, good luck with you. that. All right. No discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks, Bill, for, for working with us. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, your team. We'll, we'll be talking. Thank you all for your participation tonight and those who stuck with us till the end. Then <laughs> can you call the TA tomorrow to uh, ask him to draw it up the warrant? I can uh, email him right now. Great. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.